some fun hands-on learning. Today's video is going to show you the math activities I have ready for first, second grade. I'm calling it first, second grade because I have a seven-year-old and when you homeschool, if you are a homeschooler watching this, you know this, but if you are not a homeschooler, when you homeschool, you really don't have grade levels. So really you just teach to the child's ability. And so the activities I'm gonna show you today are the activities I wanna do to teach the skills that I want him to know. I don't worry about what grade level he's in. So, but I have to mark this video as first, second grade because if you are a teacher watching this video, that is about the level uh, of these activities. And so I wanna be, I know there are a lot of teachers that watch these videos. And so I want to be as you know, inclusive as possible so that all of you can understand uh, what I'm showing you. So the levels of, or the level he's at is first, second grade, really second grade mostly, but um, I say first grade because a lot of these activities you could do at the end of first grade as well, especially since right now we're at the beginning of the year. This is gonna be the very first week of school. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you in this video the math activities. In a separate video, I'll show you the reading and language activities I have set up for him. And, uh, and then in a separate video, I'll show you the kindergarten, first grade activities I have for my five-year-old for math. And then in another video, I'll show you his reading uh, activities. I decided to split them up so the videos don't get too long because sometimes they get really, really long, especially right now as I'm talking. And you just saw I had a little guy over here playing with his cars. He may come back in my video, I don't know. Uh, and maybe some of my other kids might come back in my video. If this is your first time watching any of my videos, I am a homeschool mom to seven kids and uh, a former teacher. So I have uh, a bachelor's and a master's degree in education. And Okay, so this week, what I do is I write down the skills that I want them to learn for the week in each subject, and then I pick my activities accordingly to match those skills. So this week, the two skills we're gonna work on are place value and comparing numbers. I thought it would be an easy place to start the year off because he knows, you know, he's, he's pretty familiar with place value, but he could use a little refresher. So that's what we're going to do. So let me kind of show you the activities that I have set up for him for this week. And by the way, for place value, I got some of these foam base 10 blocks, which I am really enjoying. And he's excited to use these because they're new and he's already try been trying to get into the bag. <laughs> okay, so let's get started. All right, so for comparing numbers, I have a unit in my early learners math curriculum that's all about comparing numbers. This is the only activity in that unit that he can do because the other ones are too easy for him. So, uh, because the other ones really are only comparing numbers one through 10, and he is way past that. So I realized as I was starting to pull activities out for him that I probably need to write a math curriculum for second grade. Because <laughs> uh, my early learner's math curriculum is more for kindergarten and first grade. So let's just put that one on the to-do list. <laughs> okay, but I can still use a few of the activities from it, so that's what I'm doing. First of all, these are our craft sticks. They are hands-on math sticks. For comparing numbers, I have hands-on math sticks for shapes and numbers, I think. But really, uh, you can, I'll leave the link below where you can download these. So I printed them out, cut them out on cardstock, hard, hard paper. You can laminate them. It feels like I didn't laminate these. I made these a long time ago. I probably should have laminated them. But then I added eyes to them and I attached them just with tape to a craft stick. And the same thing, then I attach the equal sign to a craft stick. So we use these when we're doing comparing numbers because I always teach the kids, sorry, I have a loud kiddo in the background. I always teach the kids that the alligator always wants to eat the bigger number, so that's how they use their signs. Okay, so these are our mouths eating. And then, um, so I have those out here, but I also have this activity from my early learner's math curriculum. This is called Spin and compare, and it's a comparing numbers center. Now, all the other comparing activities from that unit, I'm gonna be able to still use this year, because I'm gonna use them with my five-year-old. But, for this child, my seven-year-old, they're almost all too easy for him. 
but this one I think he will get something out of. Okay, so we're practicing comparing numbers, greater, less than, and equal to. So what the children do is there's spinner number one and spinner number two. They're gonna spin spinner number one, and they're gonna spin spinner number two. All right, spinner number one landed on eight, and spinner number two landed on the number 22. This is going to be our first number, and this is going to be our second number. Now we need to look at our mat here. If our first number is eight, and our second number is 22, which equation is it going to go in? Well, they're not equal. Eight, is eight less than 22, or is eight greater than 22? It's less than, so we're going to write it on our mat here. Eight is less than 22. You get that? All right, so then we'll spin again. We'll spin both of them at the same time, why not? All right, we got three and 10, that one's easy. So three and 10 is three greater than, less than or equal to 10, it's less than. And since we already used that spot, I'm just gonna erase and write the new, new answers. So three is less than 10. So that's how you play this game, you just spin and go from there. That's why I figured this one might be a good one for him so he can remember how to put them into the equations. And then also, if you wanted to, you could always flip these and then this becomes your first number and this becomes your second number, however you want to do it. I do get questions a lot on where I get my spinners from. These are just game spinners that I get off Amazon. I order them in packs of, I think they come in either packs of eight or 10, I can't remember. They're fairly cheap. I think they're, I don't know, $6 a pack or something like that. And I prefer that over having them use a pencil and a paper clip because it always becomes just a big chore to have to hold the pencil and flip the paper clip. But you can also do that, which is totally fine. So this activity, I will leave a link below to it. It is in my early learners math curriculum. If you own that curriculum, you could, uh, you know, I'll leave a link to just this activity and I'll also leave a link to the whole unit on comparing numbers. When you watch my videos, I always have links in the description box. So I also get questions all the time, like where can I get this? Uh, there's almost always a link in the description box. If I forget something, then of course, yeah, ask in the, and I'll try to remember. Okay, so going back to these here, these um, hands-on learning math sticks, what I'm gonna do with these is we are gonna use these with our numbers. And if you hear kids screaming in the background, they're totally fine, they're just playing and having fun. All right, so we have, I have all sorts of different manipulatives with numbers, and I have just like some uh, magnetic numbers in here, I have some wooden numbers from Melissa and Doug Clock, and this is not all our numbers by any means, but this is just one set of them. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna have him take two numbers, it could be any two, put them on one side, take two numbers, any two numbers, put them on the other side. All right, and so that is gonna be his number. So he's gonna have 65 and 32, and he has to decide which sign to use, which is gonna go in there. 65 is greater than 32, so he's gonna use this stick. And we're just gonna do this over and over. Then I'm going to, and I might have him grab numbers, or I'll probably grab numbers and put them. And then we can also go up to our hundreds place, because I'm sure he'll be ready for that. So we could do like 200. 67 on one side and 726 on the other side. I'm gonna try to keep it a little bit trickier. See how I used it the same numbers, but I put them in different places. And so which one is greater, or which number is greater, less than, or equal to? So is 267 greater than 726? Is it less than, is it equal to? Of course we know it's less than, so he would put that stick in there. So that's what we're going to do for that. So I have that all set up for him. So those are the two activities we're gonna do for practicing our greater, less than, and equal to. Now that we're done comparing numbers, I am going to go ahead and do some of these activities with him working on place value. Now these activities do come from my early learners, early learners math curriculum. And I think that these ones are still appropriate for him, even though he could probably move on from this. We are only in the first year of, first year, <laughs> first 
week of school, so I think it's a good place to start. I have uh, these cards actually, I'm not sure if these are in my early learners math curriculum. They might be in a different set of math activities I have on my website. I'll find them so that I have the link below to you. I think they, they're part of a math card set I have, activity card set. And these are for use with clips like this. But also, I have some other fun ways we like to use these kind of cards. So, of course, what he's going to do is he's going to be figuring out the numbers. So here we have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So the answer to this card is 19. He can use manipulatives and just place a manipulative on the answer. So here I have some pom-poms with magnets attached. And he can do like that and go on with his cards. Or, knowing this kid... The two things he loves to use, he loves Play-Doh and he loves little mini erasers. So let me show you how we do with the Play-Doh. The Play-Doh you can do two ways. You can have them just make a, a ball of Play-Doh and cover up the answer, like so. Or you can have them cover up both wrong answers and leave the right answer showing. So sometimes we like to do that too. So that's one way to use Play-Doh with clip cards. And then finally, like I said, knowing this car, kid, he loves our little min mini erasers. So he may want to use those and just whoop, cover up his answers that way. So let's get another card. So this one is 11. So then of course he would just take his favorite mini eraser and cover up number 11 and go on from there. This is 12. So we'll cover up 12, you get the idea. Speaking of clip cards, I have another set of place value clip cards. These ones do come in my early learner's math curriculum. And basically, these ones have different pictures that the kids use. So here's some 10 frames mashed up together. So you have 10, 20, 32. So this is the number 32. They would go ahead and mark 32 either with a clip or one of the ways I showed you. Here's one with a painter. So we have 5, 10, 15, 23. So they'd mark 23. Here's another one with 10 frame painter. Here's one with cookie jars. There's 10 cookies in each jar until you get to the bottom here. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 76, 76 on that one. Here's one with fish in a in fish tank. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 64, 64. Here's one with a little boy juggling. 10, 20, 30, 40, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 48. Of course, when you're doing place value, you want to be teaching them um, counting by tens, obviously. 10, 20, 30, 40, 52. These ones are all tens, it looks like. So there's, you're counting the petals on the flowers. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. All right, you get the idea. That's just how the, the jars look. Here's some, um, what are these ones? Jelly beans. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 92. All right, you get the idea. Okay, something else I found for place value when I was going through my cabinets. Basically, I go through my cabinets and I just look for things that I can use to meet the skill that we're working on for the week. These are just little puzzles from Lakeshore Learning and they just have to match them up to the number. So, like this one's 14. And then this one, these ones have tens and ones here. So I'm gonna have him match up these puzzles. What's the other one in here? No. I thought there was another set. But anyways, so let me see if they're over here. No, I think that's the only two kinds. All right, so there's some with the place value blocks and there's some with, some with like charts that say tens and ones. And he's gonna, I'm gonna mix them up obviously and he's going to match those. Okay, I just have two more math activities to show you for this week with him. I pulled out number sort match, numbers to 100. This one is another place value activity center from my math curriculum. You're gonna get cards like this that have little kids on them with numbers, and then you have place value strips. They take a strip and they count 10, 20, 30, 40. 
two and then they have to make the number. So they need a four and a two. So that's what I'm looking for here. Oh, come on, here's two. There's four. Okay, so then they're gonna make the number 42. Isn't that fun? All right, we'll move that one off to the side. This one is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Number 76 mm -hmm. is right there. So they're just gonna continue on like that. There are different pictures in here. So some of them use buttons and jars, and some of them use the te uh, face 10 box. All right. The last hands-on activity I have set up for him is also from my early learner's math curriculum. This is the unit on numbers to 100. Okay, can I not open? There we go. <laughs> and I pulled out this activity. It's a football theme. And basically what they're gonna do is they're going to take a card. And this one, instead of using base 10 blocks, we're counting with dominoes and tally marks. So it, give, it adds on another skill set that the child needs to be able to count tally marks. Okay, so here I grabbed a card and I'm gonna count, these are all in tens. So I'm gonna count by tens until I get here and then I'm gonna count how much that is. So it's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, four. This is also a good skill for learning subsetizing, is that how you say it? Uh, so the child can look at a, two numbers together and know immediately what that is. So if I see a five and a five together, I know these, these are tens. And if I see a three and a one together, I immediately, my brain, whoop, my brain knows that it's four. So I have 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 94. And then I'm going to find my football with 94 somewhere. And you might want to give them less than this many choices so that they're not flipping through forever. But there we go. And you put it on your card and then you grab another card. So let me show you one of the ones with tally marks. So tally mark card that I grabbed looks like this and they're gonna count by fives and then singles obviously. So five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 46, 47, 48. And they need to find their 48 football, place it on their card. And they are done with that card. So you can, if you prefer to put Velcro on the pieces so that they stay on the card and you don't have little pieces flying all over the place. I have not done that, but that is an option for you if you are worried about, you know, pieces going everywhere. And if you wanna be able to go back and look at their answers later on, then you don't have to worry about the pieces flying off. But I usually do all of my activities sitting down next to the child. So I don't really have, you know, I can see immediately if they got the answer right or not. But if you're in a classroom situation or you're in a situation where you cannot do that, where you have to see their uh, answers later and check it later, then yeah, putting Velcro on the backs and then having it be able to stick on there is probably a great way to go. Okay guys, those are all of the hands-on activities I have for first, second grade for our very first week of school for just for math. I will show you the reading and language activities in a different video. These are the ones I have for math and like I said, we do a lot of hands-on activities and then we also will do some written things. I have, uh, I pull out some workbook pages for them to do. So we don't only do hands-on, but most of our stuff is hands-on. And there are, in this particular curriculum, there are work, hand, hands-on, there are interactive worksheets that come with the math curriculum that you can use after you, after the kids have done their application and they've applied what you taught them, they've done their activity, then they can go ahead and work on those worksheets so you have a written account of their math. All right, guys, we'll see you next time in our next video. Bye.